Hello friends and welcome to your favorite show, Artist Today. Today we have along with us a very famous fashion photographer, Mr. Arun Anand. Hello sir and welcome to the show. Hello and thanks for having me here. Thank you sir. He was sharing me some of the best photographs taken by him. Let me share them with you. Aren't they awesome? So sir, let's start with cliche type of questions. Welcome. Okay. How you entered in this field? How I came to this field? Let me go, to, go back to it. Oh. And I saw, I saw some good fashion magazines. I saw some mm -hmm. good pictures which were taken by my friends. And I used to process the roles and I said, this is where I want to be. And the girls look so beautiful in it. That attracted me. I said, okay, I'll also do the same. And he was always flashy. I said, okay, I can also be flashy. I like doing that. And then he was popular. I said, I want to be that popular. And then I got into it. And when I got into it, it wasn't an easy start, but I had all the confidence in me. I made a break and got in. One of my first pictures that uh, I had an assignment was for DCM annual report. And I had taken one man to Lodi Gardens to take his pictures in the suitings. DCMs used to make some suitings mm -hmm. also. I clicked his pictures, they clicked with the agency and they put it into the annual report. And I was on. When do you feel that this person or object should be photographed by you? I never say that. I always say anybody should click it good and make it glamorized. It should be always beautified. And I find everything so beautiful. It doesn't matter. It's the best angle with the best lighting. Every, everything turns out fine. It's not so difficult. But you get used to doing the good lighting and good finding good angles and bringing out the person. So I am not choosy that it should be photographed by me. I don't think so. I'm so great. I'm also still a beginner. I still find myself that I have to learning, learning, and I learn every day. And I learn from the people only. I come with open mind and start clicking. But then I take off after I think I found some kind of uh, mood in the person, or he's getting in, he's interacting with me nicely. I've gained his confidence. I developed a rapport. Then I start taking pictures and they come out good generally. From your photographs, I find you have photographs of beautiful girls. Any specific reason behind that? I love them so much. They're so beautiful. And we can do so much on them, glamorize them. This makeup helps and makeup also makes the girls so beautiful. I think overall effect of this makeup and the girls put together is really too beautiful. I love it. I love to do that and you can experiment on them look at the boys you can't put in all that makeup and glamorize them and they feel so happy and it's the happiness that you see in them that makes them so beautiful so I love to do that and get the happiness all around me and once they do that you have all the happy people around me they keep coming back and back to me we want to do more we want to do more and then you look at the fashion, then the kind of clothes they wear, then the kind of new styles they keep on getting. It's so beautiful. I love the company. What advice would you give to the young budding photographers? Keep clicking and never lose the passion. Go deep into it and try to go very close. People ignore small things, blow them out of proportion and see the beauty coming out. And then have a lighting sense, have little... Uh, thoughts about it, what you want to really give a theme to the picture and then go about it. Pick up the subjects, pick up some per assignments, personal assignments, go and do a little research, go to the places, look around and you'll find thousands of things. Once you start have a camera in your hand, you should not stop. Keep clicking, keep clicking and one day you'll see, okay, I have made it and that's the greatest feeling a person can have. Now. If you pick up a camera, go around, say, towards the mountains or the rivers, you find stones there. Just click the stones only. There are so many shapes, so many kinds of textures on them. And sometimes you get lines in the stones, you get dots in the stones. You take the flowers, very small flowers. Now, I start taking pictures of the weeds. People don't look at them. They weed them out, isn't it? So, 
have you ever seen the wheat flowers? They're so small, go close and take the pictures, you'll start finding beauty. I find the world is so beautiful, you can click anytime. So don't have excuse that I don't find the objects to click because you don't, you're going to have the eyesight, that the vision and then your mind totally glued to the subject and you'll find everything is so beautiful. I see only beauty around me. I see whether it's a man-made or it's a natural or even in the garbage, I find beauty. And mind you, I just pick up things from the garbage sometimes and use them in my studio. They look so beautiful. And when I tell them I found them there, he says, you look into the garbage. I said, why not? Even the garbage can give you beauty. So I always keep my eyes open and I try to pick up things from anywhere. I never felt short of the subjects to shoot. I just go around, click a camera, take the pictures, and then make the pictures and they, people find out how they look. And then they appreciate. Our photographer life is like a nomad. Do you agree? It, it is in case you are outside the studio, it is. And the two things, you can be either in the studio or outside. But if you go outside, then you have to be very adventurous also because sometimes for taking pictures, you have to track miles and miles and then you find a certain subject and then you think the light is not good today. So you camp there, wait for the light to fall the next day or the next day. Sometimes you find, okay, the light was good. I wish there were some clouds here. So you gain weight, you gain weight, the patient space, that's it, and you make pictures. So going from one place to other places, you may take only one picture in three days, but that's worth it, that's worth it, worthwhile waiting for. And then you go to the next place, you're roaming around, roaming around, so you become a nomad. According to you, what does photography mean? Or with the other people who see them. I would always like to show whatever I like, but I must get to get the feedback also of the people. Is this what they want? Sometimes they may not like it, but I do it for my satisfaction because that's me. That's me. Sometimes they might find, oh, he's hung on to one kind of a theme and uh, he's just carrying on and on and on. But later on, when you accumulate all those pictures of the one kind, then people say, okay, he's done a research and he's become an expert in it. So I'm really not bothered. I do it for my satisfaction. If I have to sell the pictures in the exhibition or for say nowadays you have uh, photography art or art uh, pictures for, for uh, in the photography, they give you a lot of money. But uh, then you think, okay, let me click for others. So you click for others for money, but you take also your pictures for your satisfaction. Thank you so much, sir, for being with us. It was a pleasure having you in this show. Love being here. Thank you, sir. Friends, hope you enjoyed the show. We will be back next week, same time, same day. Till then, this is your host, Seher Kazi. See you. Bye-bye.